Light shine upon you, and uh, may He give you His peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you, o Lord, for all we are and all we will be, and for your peace, your love, your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the life we have. We pray day by day, time by time, season by season. That all we seek is that your plan and purpose in our life shall prevail over every addition, over every interference, over every scheme of the enemy. Give us the grace, O oh Lord, in this special, special holy week, that we, we will be made holy in you, sanctified, prepared, ready to receive the new presence of God, and the power that comes with it, that we shall excel, we shall triumph, we shall be victorious, we shall be overcomers, we shall be so much empowered that the enemy will have no place around us in our life and what matters to us. Lord Almighty, strengthen us, O Lord, to overcome every distractions life present with both in good ways and bad ways, that we may not lose sight of you, that our gaze may not depart from you and focus on things that are not you. Lord Almighty, this is our prayer. Be with us, O Lord, strengthen us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to yet another special time before the Lord in this special season and this special special uh, week. We're going to read the Word of God in Matthew chapter 26, 1 to 5, and also Luke chapter 21, 4 to 36. We will 
predominantly focus on what the Lord is doing this time, as he has done a lot in the past two days after he arrived Jerusalem. And yesterday we recognized that the word of God said nobody else was asking him question. Nobody else. Question was ended. And when the Lord finished stopping the public, the, the detractors, those who are not of him, from asking him question, he opened the opportunity for his people, for his disciples to ask him question, for me and you to ask him question, so that if you have questions in this season, the Lord will answer you. If you have concerns, the Lord will honor it. May you find in your heart the place of God that is visible and tangible in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to call on uh, Pastor Isabel to read the word. Matthew 26, 1 to 5. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Luke 21, four to six. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name claiming I am he. And the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will ri rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison and you will be brought before the kings and governors and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me, but make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You'll be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city. But this is the time of punishment and fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners and be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. 
There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousel, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory, glory. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. To God be the glory. Lots of information, isn't it? I thank God Almighty for the peace we see in the camp of God. The reason I have pointed to Matthew 26, 1 to 5 is to see what the enemy was doing. The elders were busy plotting and assembling people and planning on how to kill Jesus. And Jesus with his apostles, with his disciples, were simply receiving insight into the future, receiving warnings, receiving preparation. It's interesting to see that this conversation began by some disciples uh, making remarks about the temple that was so beautiful. They were simply adoring the temple. So, so they had enough peace of mind to be uh, celebrating the beauty that was before them, seeing the beauty of the uh, temple uh, as it were at that time, and that they shared among one another, and Jesus began this extraordinary teaching. You know, I said, uh, on Tuesday, God said there was question ended. And Jesus, as I said to you, began what I call his private ministry, uh, so that he began to prepare uh, his apostles, to prepare the disciples, to prepare us, for the life ahead because things are not going to be the same there is alteration and that will be permanent in multiple ways but there were things that we needed to know and this is one of them when he has gone away from the temple and with his disciples he says some of them those who were privileged to be in the midst of this conversation and when Jesus has said, as for, as for you, see this, this thing, this, the time will come when no stone will be left on top of each of each other. This whole thing that you're admiring uh, will soon, uh, one day it will be over for it. It will be destroyed. And they ask the question, teacher, when will this happen? And what will be the sign? that we need to watch out for. It's interesting that they did not say this is impossible, but they said, when will this happen? When will this happen? By this, they taught us how to ask God questions. Not the question of despair and disobedience, but the question of teaching and learning. The question of asking God, what are you doing so that I will follow? A question that says, God, when will this and how will this happen? How do I know this? It is different from God, why me? Or God, why is this happening? Or God, where are you? Are you still there? It is a question, these are questions that are predicated on the trust and faith in God. This passage has a lot of information and cannot be uh effectively addressed in the short time we have here but i just want to point out to you that what we are seeing here is not just uh, 
ordinary is extremely extraordinary. As Jesus puts out different warning and different predictions. First, we need to recognize, I must say, it will be good to refer yourself to the book of Ezekiel 10, verse uh, 18 to uh, 20, and Ezekiel as well, chapter 8, verse 5 to 12. You will see Ezekiel describing the destruction of the temple. I want to say that Ezekiel was a prophet in exile in Babylon. So he wasn't talking of the temple that Solomon built because that was destroyed by the Babylonians. While he was in exile in Babylon, he was prophesying about destruction of the temple. Apparently, in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, they built another temple, the time of prophet Haggai and Zechariah, a new temple was built called the building of the temple, but it was nothing compared to the temple that Solomon built, as you will see, uh, in the book of Haggai, that people were so dis disappointed. Uh, and, and, and Haggai had to encourage them. He was predicting the destruction of temple that at that time was actually to be rebuilt. But that temple was not as pretty as the apostles were saying. And that was because the temple that was built at that time were smaller and nothing fantastic about it, as Nehemiah would, as, as it was described in Ezra as well and in Zechariah. So that Herod, as I, you may know, was fascinated about architecture and building. So the, the historians have it that he committed 10,000 men for eight years, rebuilding, renovating, decorating the temple with different stones, just name it. So the beauty that was being discussed here was visible. Nothing was like that ever existed. It was a phenomenal structure. It was just not a structure. The temple was evidence of the dwelling of God among the people of Israel, the people of covenant. It was actually evidence of the, uh, the, it, the religion of Israel, uh, the worship of Yahweh. It, 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 is, it is central to the life of the people. It is a place, a repository of the Holy Scripture and other national literature, a meeting place for Sanhedrin, the high priests, it is a court for the Jewish law during the Roman period. Imagine how the, the apostles would have felt or the disciples would have felt about the destruction of the temple. It is like the end of the world. It is like the end of a lifestyle. This was something almost impossible to imagine. Jesus went into those analysis of what is going to happen so that we will be prepared about the changing times, about the changing in our life and in the world around us, so that we will not find ourselves in the place of despair and wondering, Lord, where are you? So that we shall be equipped to be ready and understand more about the presence of God in our life. Jesus looked at the short term and looked at the long term scenario. The hardship the apostles will face, the destruction of the temple, the end of the world as they know it, and the end of the world in the far distance. And, and in, a, in, this, in this unique moment, he had to relay this information to us so that we know. You know why? He's about to head to the cross. There are activities going on in this short one week, like never before. Of course, Jesus had to prepare his people with eventuality so that you, say, you don't say you don't know. The initial warning, I said he gave the initial warning, the immediate future. He gave also the near future, and he also gave the distant future the signs to watch. He gave 
everything that must be known. They may not sound exciting. When they ask him, how do we know these things? He replied, watch out that you do not be deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he. This was the initial warning. And this warning must be in our mind and heart. The time is near, he said. Do not follow them. When you hear of war and uprising, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. These will be, there will be earthquake, famine and pestilence in various places and fearful events and greater signs from heaven. I mean, we are in this dimension, it's still continuing. If you count in the world today, there are many nations that have risen against each other. Israel is fighting Hamas. Russia is fighting, um, is fighting Ukraine. You have Sudan, Oprah, just name it. I'm not going to dwell on that. But what I'm getting at is the Lord predicted that we must not despair. For sometimes when we behold the manifestation of evil in that magnitude, we begin to say, God, where are you? You say, no, it is part of the plan. What you're going to ask is, God, teach me to understand what you're doing. Teach me to understand what you're doing. This may be a different way of, there may be a different way of putting it in your personal life. When things are going like, there is a, 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 a big obstacle that is simply stopping you from making progress. When when nothing seems to be working, when things seems not to be moving, ask the Lord for guidance. Do not despair with the question, Lord, where are you? This was the warning the Lord gave us, the very initial warning he gave us. And then he told about the immediate future, what is going to be coming. But before all this, he says, they will seize you and persecute you, he said to the apostles and disciples. They will hand you over to the synagogue and the prisoners and, and, and they will put you in prison. Before the kings and the leaders, you will stand to testify. But he gave them this assurance. He says, but make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. That's, that's exciting news, isn't it? Only if we can find this possible in our life, make up your mind not to worry about tomorrow, about how you defend yourself, about how you prevail, how you succeed. I always say God will do his own thing his way. He says, for I will give you words and wisdom that your adversaries will not contend with. They will not understand your wisdom anymore. But the winning position is that you're able to operate from the angle where you are not worried how to defend yourself, where you are saying, for I know my Redeemer lives, where you are saying that my God will show up, where you are saying God is all in your hands. Whatever you allow happen in this situation, I am okay. The Lord said, I will rise to that occasion. I will come and I will defend you. I will talk about the near future. The Lord was speaking to these people. And when he has spoken to them, he said, truly, I said to you that this generation will not pass away before some of these things will happen. And he told them, when you see Jerusalem being surrounded by enemies, you will know that it is that the desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea not come in. Let them stay where they are. Let there be no movement, more or less. How dreadful it will be for those who are old and nursing mothers, those who cannot flee. He says, this is punishment from the Lord, and it will come to pass. And it wasn't too long, 40 years, about 40 years later, about AD 70, the Romans army, the Roman armies, a late siege over Jerusalem for years and weakened them from the inside and destroyed them. 
millions of people were destroyed. And you know what is amazing about this? The temple was never rebuilt. When, when Babylon destroyed the temple Solomon built, they rebuilt it. But in the time of Jesus, when Herod has refurbished and renovated and then made this temple that was rebuilt so, so, so nice, Jesus was speaking over the temple and saying it will be destroyed. The Lord was about to make a new temple for himself. In fact, if you read, what 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 Isaiah and what Ezekiel described, you you just you just shudder at the at the power of God we serve. He says in Ezekiel ten eighteen, then the glory of God departed from the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim, and the cherubim lifted its, its their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight when they were when they went out the wheels were beside them and they stood at the door of the east gate of the lord's house and the glory of god the glory of god of israel was above the cherubim this is the living cherubim that i saw And I saw it move towards the river. When you talk about the departure of God from the house where his name is called, when, 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 when it, 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 it fortifies the truth that if the, if the Lord is with you, nothing will happen, nothing will be against you. The Spirit of God had to depart from this temple. And went on the mountain, and the cherubim open his wing and fly up. These are unseen presence in the house of God that was revealed to Ezekiel. And they saw this movement. He saw the departure of God from the house where he, he dwelt for the for the for the for the sake of mankind. And when the temple was destroyed, it was never to be rebuilt because you are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit was released like never before. The word of the Lord spoke about that. He changed from the house made of, made of hand to the, to the house he has built himself. The trouble, though, is that many are unable to inhabit the Holy Spirit of God. And many who inhabited it are leaking of the Holy Spirit. And many who are filled with the Holy Spirit are operating for their personal needs. But the Lord wants you to use His Holy Spirit to produce the fruits of the Spirit. Of all the fruits of the Spirit, none is personal. It's about loving people, about showing kindness to people. It's about showing, be persevering. It's about touching lives and reaching out to show the goodness of God. Therefore, we will start today by praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit to be renewed in our life. You see, the busy schedule of Jesus is unveiling before our eyes. There are teachings we must take seriously. To build the house of God is important to him. And when you gather together in one accord, in one spirit, in fact, the Lord made it so simple that he said, when two or three gather in my name, I'm in the midst. He says, the church is built when two or three of you come together in my name, in one accord harboring the Holy Spirit of God, not him pecking each other. And that is why some big churches may not be the seat of miracles anymore because people are simply not gathering in, in one spirit. They're no more gathering in the name of the Lord. So that you have to ask yourself, do I go to church for the Lord that I serve, 
or do I go there for other reasons? I'm not going to devil into multiple reasons why people may go to church. But it's a personal assessment that you must undertake. Because if you go for God, you're going to be bringing people for God. You're going to be serving. You're going to be giving. You're going to understand that I am doing this for my God. Of course, people are going to be blessed because of your work. But then the Lord, you do it for will reward you. So that you're not going to say, I don't want anybody blessed. I just want the Lord I serve to be glorified. No, the glorification of God is in the blessing you bring in the life of others through service, through prayers, and through your giving. Father, Lord wants to give. The whole journey of this Holy Week is that of love. John puts it nicely that a man will love his friends so much as to lay down his life for them. And God so loved the world that he gave. The process of receiving the gift that is divine like no other is what the Holy Week represents. And the process of the season of receiving, teaching, admonition, preparation, and empowerment like no other is what the Holy Week represents. And you can't miss any of that because one leads to the other. As a matter of fact, the process of the Holy Week prepares us to receive the salvation that is imminent. May the Lord renew you and restore you in his glory that this special, special Holy Week shall also be special in your life in Jesus' name. I pray that this special Holy Week will also be special in your life in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord shall fill you with his Holy Spirit afresh in Jesus' name. I pray that the renewal of your covenant with God shall be done through the eyes of love of God for you in Jesus' name. That there should be no question or no, 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 no impediment of any kind. And every accusation of the enemy silenced, that the Lord will give you the grace of continuous beginning, the grace to begin again, the grace to start again, the grace to renew yourself in your relationship with him. May he who is almighty favor you and favor his plan and purpose upon your life and living. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. May he go ahead of you and touch your life like never before. Glory be to God. Glory, glory be to God. You logged in as NK. To God be the glory for the anointing that I see. May that anointing be made permanent in Jesus' name. May it break all yokes. And for all those, the Lord is anointing at this time. I see multiple anointing. But some pulled back and wouldn't submit to the anointing. May the Lord not pass anyone by in Jesus' name. May the anointing that breaks the yoke be made visible and permanent upon our lives in Jesus' name. The anointing of God is moving. May the Lord Almighty glorify himself in this season. In Jesus' name, Lord Almighty, take all the glory. Take all the adoration. Lord, take all the adoration. Glory, glory be to God. Yes, Lord, the, the Lord in us kick love. You came in with empty buckets and the Lord is filling your bucket. It's filling your bucket. I see the tap open and the water filling this bucket. The good news is that the bucket is not leaky. The Lord surely is doing a new thing in your life. Therefore, do a new thing for God in this season. Do a new thing for God in this season. 
May the Lord Almighty sustain his blessing upon you and not allow the enemy in any way to petition against you in any way in Jesus' name. But the power to do something new for God can overcome every petition of the enemy. Take that seriously. And may the Lord lay in your heart and empower you to understand, not just to know, but to act in doing something new for God, including bringing somebody to Christ. God bless you and bless what he's doing in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, glory be to God. He says there is no, there is more people here that are in the covenant of upliftment. If you want to receive upliftment of God, or you have received and want to make it permanent, do something new for Jesus. Just say, God, I'm doing this thing, this new thing. I know I haven't done it before, or it's long time I did this before. I am doing it for your namesake, and I am doing it for the blessings that I have seen or have not seen. Father, Lord, take all the glory. Refill your people with your spirit. The spirit that understands you, the spirit that hears your voice, the spirit that knows you, the spirit that recognizes your leading and direction. Bless your people with the spirit that is you. The spirit that comforts, endures, teaches, and uplifts, so that every confusion is taken out. May the Lord refill you, remold you, and renew you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hmm. The Lord is doing something new in the life of many. Juliet, you logged in as Juliet Harris. The word of the Lord came and stood like a pillar in front of you. Why is that a pillar? And you're running it around. You're just running it around. And I hear the word say, embrace the word of God and leave the word of God. Embrace and leave the word of God is the message. You're not alone. There are others that the word of God has become an obstacle in their lives. But this season, I pray that the Lord shall open the door that you shall embrace his word in Jesus' name. Because this pillar is visible, you know the word of God, you see it, but you just navigate it. I spread this to all who are simply in that position. May the Lord help you to embrace his word. And to embrace his word is to live by his word, to act on his word. Not your way, but his way. So that the enemy will not continually operate in this terrain where he's simply watching and causing waiting to prolong. May the Lord Almighty cause the anointing to increase in Jesus' name. That anointing must bring glory to God. For everything he does is to his glory that we shall testify and be a witness to his hand upon our lives. May the Lord strengthen you in Jesus' name. You logged in as Adda Amadine Eki. May the Lord strengthen you to connect to the message that is just being delivered and you're able to rise and don't do that which the enemy thought they have succeeded in. There are all the people here. Connect yourself to that word. Joy and equity. Connect yourself to doing what the Lord is speaking this hour. He's simply saying, find time for the word of God. And when you have, act on it. If the Lord says 
love me, love God. If the Lord says, be my witness, be his witness. If he says, bring to me, give to him, act on something. It may not be possible to act on everything at the same time. You may have acted on some before, but there is a new thing that requires a new action. Act on them. Act on them. Do not just go ahead and do act. Make it deliberate. The word of the Lord says, make it deliberate. That is evidence of new covenant and new understanding. So that your prayer will be different. It's not about what you want the Lord to do. It's about God, give me strength to do X, Y, Z for you. You just need to engage with that. For in that lies the breakthrough power and presence that is imminent in this season. For the Lord has set in motion a holy week to teach us how to harness, unveil and release that which he has brought to, to us. Father, Lord, to you be all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for the warnings that you have released unto us, not to be afraid, to convince ourselves not to be afraid. We need that, O oh Lord. For many a times we think we are the ones doing what we are doing. We think we are in charge. We are afraid because we think in that we have no solution. If we know that you have solution, we're not going to be afraid. If we know that it's actually not us, but you who is making possible all that we see as what we do, then we shall be able to operate in that conviction and fear will flee away. Lord Almighty, this moment we pray everything that has stood against us operating in the boldness that we we enjoy because of your presence father lord uproot them in jesus name uproot them in jesus name if it is lack of your presence because we walked away or because our actions or inaction has distanced you from us. Father Lord, we pray, have mercy on us in this season and bring us back into that place where the enemy will have no chance. Father, come back to us and may we draw nearer to you. Lord Almighty, we just want to be with you and be in your vicinity. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, help us in Jesus' name. My Lord and my God, help us in Jesus' name. All that we pray is your help because we know once we get that, we are made. Once you come on our side, O oh Lord, whatever you have spoken will begin to flourish. It will not just manifest, it will, it will, it will flourish. Lord, we pray. Come on our side more than ever before in Jesus' name. Father, help us to know, feel, and, 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 and receive your presence on our side. That our confidence shall be increased. And we shall be in no doubt that we are not alone. Father, Lord, everything that makes us operate and think we are alone, Lord, overcome for us in Jesus' name. For when you are with us, Lord, who, who can be against us? Or what can be against us? Even the mountain was caused to level before Zerubbabel because your spirit was with him. Lord, we know that. Therefore, Lord, in this, in this season that is holy, in this season of sanctification, in this season of enormous teaching, empowerment, and upbringing of your people, Lord. May we receive a lot from you in Jesus' name. May we act on that which you have 
directed in Jesus' name. Lord, lead us. Lead us, we pray. Lead us, Jesus, we pray. My Lord and my God, lead us. Lead the way, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may operate in your leading and not ours. In Jesus' name. Amen. You logged in as Ola Depot. I don't know what that is, but there is something that is happening that is, your table is being cleared by this hand, but it wasn't like it's being cleared smoothly. This table was set up and this hand was like clearing it with, with a bit of force. Why is that? Why, why is that being pushed away? Content of your table is being pushed away. I couldn't see what is being pushed away. Ask the Lord Almighty to take control. Prayer say, God, in this season, take control. Take control. Every way I have delayed or drifted, reverse it, but take control. Take control of my vicinity. And rebuild me the way you desire that I shall be a child of your glory. Pray that prayer non-stop as often as you remember. May the Lord cause every scheme of the enemy to, to infest your terrain with unpleasantness. May that not come to pass in Jesus' name. Every force that rises against you, may they be destroyed in Jesus' name. May the Lord deliver Holy Ghost arrest around your terrain and give you his victory to his glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. K.A. The Lord says, I know you. You cannot hide from me. Wherever you are, I will find you. For I have a covenant with you. It doesn't matter how far the enemy wants to drift that covenant. I stand by my position that upon, upon your life, I must take glory. Reach out to members of your family and say to them, the Lord says, I am a new creation loved by God. Therefore, I want you to be a new creation. I want you to be loved by God as well. I want you to come closer to God. First evangelism. I don't know what that is the Lord is saying to you, but what he's saying to you is what you've heard. All you need to do to, unlock, to cause the rest to begin to unfold is to reach out to people close to you and speak the word of God to them. And I see the word of God in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 to 12, given to you. The Lord says, read it and reflect on it. I go and minister my word to people, is the command. May the Lord Almighty help you to operate in this unction of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. To God be the glory. Ehizogi. Go and thank the Lord for everything. Just say, God, I thank you for everything. There are a lot of confusion revolving like wild wind. It was at a distance before, but the impact, it hasn't even landed at this at the destination, just the impact, the flying off of the movement is impacting already and creating turbulence. But the Lord distance you from it so that a day like this will come when your thanksgiving will open doors for you. May the Lord Almighty receive you in the place he has made for your protection. The clear back to sender to every power and principality that try to creep in into your terrain, that the Lord Almighty will return to sender every of the evil plans in Jesus' name. 
May God Almighty strengthen you and empower you to his glory in Jesus' name. There are many people here who are simply waiting on the Lord. The word of the Lord says, waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. I pray that your waiting shall be over in Jesus' name. I pray that your waiting shall be over in Jesus' name. May the Lord Almighty answer you in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer in this holy week for what is left till Sunday. Declare and say, God, my waiting is over. <clears throat> for I know that my waiting is over. I know that my waiting is over. I know that a time of manifestation is here. A time of answered prayer is here. A time to show your power and strength is here. My waiting is over. Lord, there are many things they wait. Some they have prayed for, some they have not prayed for. But the waiting is over. May the Lord cause manifestation, revelation, and actualization of his promises upon your life in this season in Jesus' name. And may you testify of God's hand and presence in this season in Jesus' name. The waiting is over. Father, Lord, the waiting is over. I pray and thank you, Lord, because the waiting is over. The waiting, O oh Lord, is over. Everything, O oh Lord, that enemy has delayed. We are happy, O oh Lord, to wait in accordance with your plan and purpose. But everything the enemy has withheld, either by petitioning or by any manipulations, any scheme that prevailed because of our actions or inaction, Lord, this time that you have risen in our favor, we accept the declaration. I declare upon you that the waiting is over in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, the waiting is over in Jesus' name. My Lord and my God, the waiting is over in Jesus' name. Let your people receive that which glorifies your name, that their joy must now explode, and they shall dance new dance, and they shall sing new song. For the season of Easter is a time of celebration, a celebration of salvation. Lord, it shall also be ours in multiple ways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the delivering power of God never depart from you, but may it grow day by day, not only in bound, but in strength and power, that the enemy shall find you a waste of time and walk away from your vicinity in Jesus' name. Father, only you can do this. Do this, O Lord, and take glory in Jesus' name. My Lord and my God, do this and take glory in Jesus' name. To you, O Lord, be all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> glory. Glory be to God. May the Lord remind you through the presence of his Holy Spirit to say the prayers that will make the difference. Whether you are walking, whether you are driving, Wherever you are, may you remember to say from the bottom of your heart, Lord, I thank you for the waiting is over. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God Almighty. For we know that the waiting is over. The new things the Lord has promised will manifest and accomplish. For he who declared the waiting is over is faithful. May we not be a hindrance to the process of manifestation of God's promise upon our life in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes, Lord. To you, O Lord, be the glory. And you alone shall take all the adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, Lord, this time 
it's time. Somebody say it's time. It's time. And this time is my time. It's time, O oh Lord, it's time. It's time, Father. The time of holiness, the time of holy week, the time of salvation, the time of deliverance, the time, O oh Lord, is here. The time is ours. It's time, O oh Lord. It's time to meet us at our point of needs. It's time, O oh Lord, to, to answer prayers that are delayed. Father, it's time. Time, O oh Lord, is ours. Therefore, seize the moment. Empower me, O oh Lord, is your prayer to seize this moment. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence take it by force. I say seize the moment, to seize the moment. Whatever the enemy is doing or trying to do is immaterial. For the Lord will empower us to seize the moment in Jesus' name. Time is here and time is ours and we are ready to seize the moment. Every impediment to that, O oh Lord, may they be destroyed in Jesus' name. May the Lord strengthen you and empower you that this season shall not come to an end without you testifying. And when we say this season, it is imminent. The season of the resurrection of Christ. Before Sunday, the Lord will give you your testimony in Jesus' name. Stop thinking how, Lord Almighty, I come against every doubting spirit, every operational mechanism of the enemy to mutilate the power of faith and belief and trust in you by wondering, by people wondering and looking around and saying how, by asking those human questions that become impediment to the divine authority in their life. Lord, I speak, O oh Lord, upon their lives and declare that before Easter Sunday ends, you will show them a new dawn. You will cause the new opportunity to take root. You will cause the manifestation of your new blessing. You will cause the manifestation of your new empowerment. You will release, O oh Lord, the angels of help upon the lives that need help. Upon those who desire healing, O oh Lord, they will receive. And those who are waiting on you will see the time I preach that even now they will sing a new song. Glory be to you, my Lord and my God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory be to God. Yes, Lord. To you and you alone be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you immensely. I will put this here in case your the Lord has touched you to give. May the Lord receive your thanksgiving. And may that break all fetters and open all doors and make a miracle of you to manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. May your testimonies be unto God a, 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 a smelling aroma that he treasures. May it be unto God a manifestation of your gratitude. May it be unto God evidence of your righteousness that every impediment of the enemy will overcome, will be overcome by the power of your testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May we share your testimony with, the, with you and glorify God for you, and thereby expanding your coast to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There is still opportunity to follow us on social media. By all means, find us and follow us and be part of all that the Lord is sharing there and through us that the Lord will continually impact your life and lives of your friend that you bring to be part of that social media in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. To you, Lord, be all the glory. May we all pray the grace 
may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and keep you. May you operate with the knowledge and conviction that Jesus loves you and that you love him back in Jesus' name. Amen. I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Amen.